and we're gonna look at verses uh, one through nine. I, I really wanna provide some instruction this morning to, to our pastors, amen? Um, because, um, you know, I mean, this, 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 thing is, this thing is no joke, you know? This thing is no joke. We have a, a serious work to do for God. You know, I'm, I'm often amazed by, you know, doctors, when doctors say, you know, um, that they are, you know, that they are practicing medicine. they are practicing medicine that there are yet things that are undiscovered about us and they are practicing very often on us I don't I don't want no practicing pastors if listen if you go if you gonna practice practice in the mirror at home because practicing you know the spiritual things of God on Christians you mean you you could mess some folk up so we need we need practice no doubt about it but I'm practicing at home standing in the mirror you know I'm I'm laying before God seeking God as to listen how we're going to minister how we're going to counsel one you know how we're going to come together and do what God has called us to do amen praise the Lord Praise the Lord. And so uh, I think that, you know, when it comes to, to practicing, hey, pastors, let's, let's practice at home. Let's, let's get in front of the mirror and talk to the Lord. Let's open up that scripture and, and, and practice at home. Amen? Because when we get here, man, we got, we got a win. We got a victory to win. Amen? Praise the Lord. So are we there? First Peter chapter 5. Verses uh, 1 through 9. Amen. And it says, The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Being neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time casting all your care upon him for he careth for you be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour whom resist steadfast in the faith knowing that the same afflictions are, comp are accomplished in your brethren that are accomplished in the world uh, the subject I want to speak from today is pastors shepherd the flock shepherd the flock Shepherd the flock. Being himself an elder, Peter urged elders to serve willingly and with pure motives. The elders should be examples. The elders should be role models, even patterns of Christ. They should have a shepherd's heart looking to Christ as the chief shepherd, as their own pattern, and the one who will one day reward them for their work. Thus, our pastors are called to lead us, to feed us, and to intercede for us. Let's take a deeper dive in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. It says, The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but a ready mind. You see, one of the ways we demonstrate our love for God is how we nourish and care for the sheep. Amen. For it was Jesus who asked Peter in the book of St. John's, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? Feed my lamb. And then he said it again the second time. 
Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said, feed my sheep. And then he said it a third time. Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? And I think somewhere along the line, Peter got a little tired of it. He said, Lord, you know I do. Feed my sheep. You see, your love for God will be demonstrated how you feed, how you lead, and how you intercede for the sheep which are among you. So you can't take a sword to the sheep, but you can take a staff, if you will, to the sheep. We all, as pastors, have a staff. Understand that that staff has a straight edge, which when the, when, when the sheep get out of line, you kind of nudge them a little bit to get them back in line because every now and then we all get in, we all get out of line. But then there's a hook on the other end of that staff as well. That when they get way out of line, you got to take that hook and hook them back in and pull them back to safety. Praise the Lord. Pull them back to safety. Pull them back to safety to a place where they are away from danger. But you know what? You got to do it always out of a spirit of love. You can't do it out of a spirit of frustration. You can't do it out of a spirit of anger. You got to do it out of spirit of love. Because pastors, listen, the sheep are never your problem. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and against the rulers of the darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places. The sheep in and of themselves are never your problem. It's the spirits that's leading the sheep that are your problem. Love the sheep. Come against the spirits violently, though. Amen. Love the sheep. Amen. We are called to love the sheep. Don't be so quick to get frustrated with the sheep. Don't be so quick to, be, to, to, to become impatient with the sheep. Because, listen, to love the sheep is to love God. Amen. To mistreat the sheep, though, is to mistreat God. Amen. Remember, the sheep belong to God. And we must treat them as such. Peter goes on to tell us that we should take the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but for a ready mind. In short, if you're going to pastor people, you have to have the right attitude and you have to have the right motive, pastors. You can't lead and feed a flock properly if you're motivated by money and selfish gain. We must have a willing heart to do this, and we must be called to do this. Amen. How many of you know out there that anything you're called to do, nobody has to force you to do it? Anything you're called to do, nobody has to compel you to do it. You see, these pastors are called to do what God has called them to do. You see, when you're called to do a thing, listen, nobody has to force me to get up and come to the house of the Lord. Nobody has to force me to read the word of God regularly. Nobody has to force me to pray regularly. Nobody has to force me to get on my face on behalf of the flock and pray for the flock. Yes, we have an intercessory prayer team in this building that prays for the flock. But if anybody is going to pray, it better be the pastors. If anybody is going to lead, it better be the pastors. If anybody is going to feed, it better be the pastors. Yes. Yes, we depend on all, all levels of leaders in the body, but make no mistake about it, stay on the wall. Amen. Stay on the wall. Amen. Stay on the wall. I have people ask me quite often at work, especially in my role. You know, in, in, in my role, I, uh, you know, I have my regular job, and then there's that, 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 there's that union stuff that I do. But I don't get paid for that union stuff. And then there's, there's, there's the pastoring here. And somebody asked me the other day, they said, Pastor, how, how, do, you, how, how do you handle all, the, all of that? You know, that, that, that union stuff you don't get paid for, drop that stuff. You don't get paid for that. But my heart, bro, is to help people. 
My heart is to see people delivered in whatever area of life there is. I don't wait for deliverance for Sunday morning. I don't wait for deliverance on Wednesday. I don't wait for deliverance on Friday. As pastors, we have to be willing to bring deliverance wherever we are, including on our jobs. As Christians, we have to be willing to bring that, that, that level of deliverance forth wherever we are. Listen, if we're, if we're waiting to get here to do it, you're already missing it, baby. It can be done on the street corner. It could be done in the grocery store. It could be done in your house. It could be done in my house. It could be done on your job. You just got to be open and willing to allow God to do it. Nobody, listen, when you are called, Nobody has to compel you and force you to do anything because you believe that that is your purpose and you are motivated Amen. to press into it. And the blessing here is we got pastors that are motivated Amen. to press into it. Amen. You've heard the testimonies. You heard those, those who stood and, and shared with our pastors and, 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 that, and that speaks to the fact that they are called and that they are motivated, not out of selfish gain. Yes. They are motivated by the power of God to do the work that God has called them to do. And yes. when you have a good pastor, you better hold on to it because a good pastor yes. is hard to find. Yes. And we got five of them. Yes. And we got five of them. First Peter 5, 3 and 4 says, neither as being lords over God's heritage, Amen. but being in samples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Listen, man, the, the flock doesn't belong to us. Amen. The flock belongs to God. He, listen, we are the under shepherd. He is the chief shepherd. We are to be that example. We are, as I said a couple of weeks ago, we are to be that pattern. Apostle Paul put it like this. He said, ye are our epistle, written in our heart, known and read among all men. Listen, some people may never open the Bible or they may open it very little. But every time they see you, pastors, they're reading. Every time they see you, they're reading. What kind of epistle are you going to be? What kind of letter are you going to be? What impression are you going to leave them with? Amen. Leave them with the word of life. Amen. Leave them with something that they can hold on to. Leave them with some hope. You know what I'm saying? You know, you, 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 you can plant the seed, somebody else will water, but God will give the increase, but at least be willing to plant the seed. Mama used to say, if you can't say something good, somebody heard that. <laughs> Mama used to say that if you can't what? Say something good, don't say nothing. I'm going to say it a little bit different. If you can't say something God, don't say nothing. Because if it ain't life, then it's less than life. Now, you can call it what you want to call it, but if it ain't life, it's less than life. If you can't say something God, then don't say nothing. If you can't add value, if you can't add value to the relationship, if you can't add value to what's going on right now in this person's life, then it's best that you, what the apostle used to say, stop talking immediately. Immediately. Because we're not practicing pastors. Remember what I said? We, we practice on each other at home. Listen, I'm meeting right now. I'm meeting with all of these families. And you know what I spend most of my time doing? Praying. Just just praying. Not 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 really going in the word and looking for a scripture. It's already in my heart. Just praying because listen, they don't need. A word, you can get a word from anywhere, amen? amen? 
They need the word. They need the rhema word for their life. So we spend most of our time, pastors, on our face. On our face. Listen, you can get a word anywhere. And a word at times can be a good word. But listen, that word is a good word. But that's not the word for you because that A word, that word is not covering you. Your covering is here. Your covering is amongst these that sit across this front row. They don't just have a word for you. They have the word for you. A word will cause you to get a good shout on. A word might even cause you to get a good praise on. But the word will change your life. And that's what we want. We want the word. Let's go on. Five, First Peter 5 and 5 and 6 says, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. How many of you know we need to be clothed with humility? Amen. Man, we need, to, we need to put it on. We need to wear it. We need not leave home without it because we need this gift called humility in our lives desperately, especially among pastors, especially among leaders. Praise the Lord. We need it desperately. You see, humility causes me to see myself through the mirror of the Holy Ghost. True humility causes me to see myself from God's perspective. And you might be saying, well, why is that important? Because when I'm starting to look at myself through the mirror of the Holy Ghost, I find out real quick that I ain't all that. I find out real quick that what I thought I was, I ain't all that. I find out real quick that though I'm looking more and more like Jesus, I'm not quite there yet. And because I'm not quite there, it keeps me on my knees. It keeps me on my face. But what we do very often is we compare ourselves to others. And when you start comparing yourselves to others, then that causes you to walk in pride. Because when you start measuring yourself against another man, you start saying, yeah, I'm doing this and yeah, I'm doing that. And yeah, he's not doing that. And yeah, he's not doing that. Yes, it's easy to begin to walk in pride then. But when you are looking at yourself through the mirror of the Holy Ghost, you find out real quick. Bow down and worship. Because everything that I have, everything that I am, everything that I will be is simply because of God's grace. I'm nothing without God's grace. And so when I begin to understand that I have nothing and I am nothing, if there's such a thing as less than nothing, I'm less than nothing without the grace of God, it causes me to humble myself. Pastors, we must continually look at ourselves through the mirror of the Holy Ghost. Because the, the, the thing is, is, listen, man is never the standard. Man has never been the standard. Why would we ever measure ourselves to man? Why? Man ain't going to get us into heaven. They might help us go to hell, but they definitely ain't going to get us into heaven. And so the thing that keeps me, the thing that keeps me operating in humility is I keep looking at myself through the mirror of the Holy Ghost. And though I've come a long ways, how many of you know sometimes I still don't like what I see? There ain't no doubt I believe I'm good looking. But man, when I look at look through the mirror of the Holy Ghost, I find that I ain't that good looking. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? Let me tell you what, who it ain't. It ain't you. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the greatest of them all? Let me tell you who it ain't. It ain't you. Because if you're looking through the mirror of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is going to tell you, bro, it ain't you. You falling short. It's Jesus. 
How many of you know it's Jesus? How many of you know it's Jesus? The great I am, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the wheel in the middle of the wheel, the great and morning star, our wonderful counselor, our mighty God, our prince of peace, all of that on the wall. Mama told you a lie growing up when you stood before the mirror and said, mirror, mirror on the wall. I must be the fairest of them all. Now don't get me wrong, you cute. But you ain't that cute. Until we hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant, until thou into the joy of the Lord. Don't stop. Don't stop. Put on humility, wear it, don't leave home without it. Check again and double check before you leave to make sure you're covered in it. Amen. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive them of their sin and heal their land. Is there anybody willing to allow the spirit of God? To humble them. Yes, thank you, See, it's, it's best that you allow the Spirit of God to do it. It's best that you begin to talk to the Lord about, God, sh show, show me where I'm walking in pride. Show me where I'm walking in self-worship. Because that's what pride is. I mean, it's just self-worship. You know, I, what I think, what I feel, what I want is, is, is above what God thinks and what God feels and, and what God wants. It ain't nothing but self-worship. You go to Isaiah 14 and it'll show you. It's all about I will, what I want, what I think, what I believe. I want, to, I, 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 I want, I, I want to sit on the mount. I want to do this. I want to do that. It ain't, it ain't nothing but self-worship. We need to become a people who operates in humility. Peter goes on to say, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Peter said, humble yourselves. Thus we have been given by God the gift to humble ourselves because it is better that we take the initiative to do it by the leading of the Spirit than to have God do it. Y'all, anybody remember King Nebuchadnezzar? Go over and read somewhere in Daniel. I think it's somewhere around about chapter 4. Down on the, at the latter end, 29, 30 or something like that. Nebuchadnezzar is walking around in the palace. In all his greatness. Telling himself all he had done and the greatness of his kingdom he's looking around and he's patting himself on the back telling himself look at what I did it's mine this is what I built by the hands of all them Israelite slaves this is what I done so one moment he's walking in in, in pride, he, 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 he's on the mountaintop, and the next moment, he's grazing in the field like an animal. Well, what you're saying, preacher, what I'm saying is, is that you don't want God to humble you. The word has already said, listen, humble yourselves. Begin to seek God, begin to examine God in that area and to begin to humble yourself because if you allow the Lord to do it, you might be the next one out there in that yard or in that field grazing like cattle. You, you, listen, it's easier to go ahead on and submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he shall flee. Resist the devil and he shall flee. You see, the, the, the thing that I've discovered about Satan is Satan is, a, is like electrical current flow. Electrical current flow, I'm an electrician by trade. The thing that electrical current flow will do is electrical current flow will take the path of least resistance to complete the circuit. So if given the opportunity for electrical current to flow through a small wire 
or a large wire, electrical current is going to take the large wire because it gets there quicker without a whole lot of resistance. Okay? Everybody catch that? Yes, sir. So the enemy, when he comes after you, he's going to come after those with minimal resistance. Those who will not fight. Those who will not submit themselves to God and resist the devil. Those who will not put up a fight spiritually, those are the ones that he's going to come after because you have put up minimal resistance. You got to stand up and decide as for me in my house, we will serve the Lord that greater is, is, is greater is he that is in me that he that is in the world. Praise the Lord. You got to take a stand and having done all to stand, stand therefore having your lawns girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. Yes. Because somebody said, we're known by our weakest link. Your weakest link is the one that's putting up the least amount of fight. So pastors, if you know your weakest link, then you got to get in and get up under them and gird them up. So that they'll have the strength spiritual strength, spiritual fortitude Amen. to fight. Y'all picking up what I'm putting down? Amen. If you know what your weakest link is, then you know the problem. The problem is, is they're not putting up enough resistance to the degree where they're submitting themselves to God and causing the enemy to flee. So to the leadership, get up under those that are your weakest link and gird them up and demand in the name of Jesus that they begin to resist the devil. They're not putting up enough spiritual fight. Amen. Casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. We have to learn that we can't shepherd the flock under our own power Amen. and under our own strength. We must cast our cares upon him because he absolutely does care for you. I remember standing right here on January 6th when after the installation was over, Apostle put his hands on my shoulders and he said, now all the weight is on you. When I got home, I said, here God, Ministry ain't gonna kill me. Real talk, ministry ain't gonna kill me. Got plenty of qualified and bona fide leaders in this house that's ready to run. Hear, hear God, come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest. For your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I said, God, I appreciate it, but here you go. I got a beautiful wife with many years to love. No, devil, you ain't killing me. I got a pretty grandbaby, beautiful kids that I still want to enjoy. Guess what, God? I'm going to spread some of that weight amongst the ecclesiastical staff, the deacons, the mothers, the saints, and the friends, and the visitors if you want some. I got plenty to go around, baby. I ain't Superman, and I ain't trying to be, but I am God's man, and I'm learning how to delegate. Pastors, don't you let ministry kill you. That's why I tell y'all every now and then, you know I'm getting away, so you get away. 
Because listen, when you cannot get away, when you feel like you cannot get away because the ministry won't survive without you, then guess what you become? Your own God. Let that sink in for a minute. If I get to the place where I feel like, man, I, I can't. Well, I can go on vacation, baby, but I need to come back on Saturday night because I got to preach. Now, I heard a pastor say this. I can't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't gonna call no names. I, I learned this. I'm on, I'm on YouTube. <laughs> I ain't calling no names. But I heard a pastor say this. He says, when I, when I go on vacation, um, I'll go through the week, but I'm gonna be back on Saturday night. And I said, why? He said, man, because I, I, I got to preach the gospel. I said, so you have, you become your church's God. He said, excuse me. I said, no, I'm not. I don't want to be disrespectful. But you have become your church's God, and now your church is going to begin to look at you like you are idol. Y'all catch that? I ain't your God, and I'm definitely not your idol. We got plenty of leaders here to do the work of the Lord. While Pastor Mason and any other pastor or any other leader in this place go to enjoy themselves for a while. And you know that pastor ain't spoke to me since. Now, he's, he, we, we, spoke to be, we spoke to be tight. But I said, wait a minute, but you, you have become your ministry's God. And your ministry has made you an idol. Now it's possible that you and your ministry going to hell. If I got to be up here every Sunday and I can't get away, then I become your God and an idol to you. It's too much foolishness going on in the house of God. To where a man of God has to believe that I, I got to be there. And if I ain't there, we can't roll. Well, well, what's the Holy Spirit's job? He might even see this, but I ain't called no name. Because sometimes, man, you, 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 just, got, you just got to tell the truth and shame the devil. And then, and, and here's, the, here's the odd thing. He's going to say to me after he leaves, man, I ain't never heard it like that. Well, if you ain't never heard it like that, then come on back, bro, and get some more, because I got a lot of more. I got a lot of more. Listen, pastors, you don't want to be anybody's God. You don't want to be anybody's God. And you don't want them to think that you're the idol. And so when the man of God said, it's yours, you got to wait. I got home. I ain't want to do it in front of everybody. I got home. Here, God, there's your wait. Because I ain't the deliverer God is. I'm just the vessel that he uses. You're not the deliverer. God is, you're just the vessel that he uses. You heard ministers say, we're all deliverers in this house. We are the vessel that God uses to bring deliverance. But the Holy Spirit is the deliverer. Let's move on. We, we, we're about to wind up, pastors, so we can go break some bread. Is this all right? Because, you know, I, I was struggling at first. Because y'all got so encouraged on Friday. And I said, Lord, this, not, this, 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 this ain't what you gave me. You gave me some instruction. You gave me some instruction for the pastors. I, listen, I, I, want you, I want you, listen, I want you to grow, man. I want you to get better. I want you to get better. I'm, I'm, I'm every day, man, I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to do this thing better. I'm trying to excel and grow and become what God would have me to be. I'm constantly looking in the mirror of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 
First Peter 5 and 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. In other words, to be sober is to be clear-headed, Amen. not drunk. Mm-hmm. Listen, if you're going to be drunk, be drunk on that new wine. Well, the Bible says, and what's it, Ephesians 5 and 18, be not drunk with wine where it's in excess, but be ye filled with the Spirit. If you're going to be intoxicated, be intoxicated with the Spirit of God. If you're going to be under the influence, be under the influence of the Spirit of God. You see, when you're under the influence of alcohol, your walk, your talk, your speech, your actions display that you're drunk. You've been drinking a little bit. You got, you got alcohol in your bloodstream. Christ wants us to be uh, 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 under the influence of the Spirit of God to the degree that I walk, I talk, our actions, our life demonstrates that we drunk with that new wine, but we walk in steady. It's all up in the bloodstream. If you're going to be under the influence of anything, be under the influence of the Spirit of God. He says, be vigilant, be watchful. Watch ye and pray, for the spirit is truly ready, but the flesh is weak. You hear me? Take heed to your calling. Examine yourself frequently, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And man, he, he wants to devour senior leadership desperately. Desperately. You see, pastors, if he can get us looking cross-eyed at each other. If he can get us where we can't trust one another, if he can get us where we can't work together, if he can get us where we can't fellowship, if he can get us where we can't love one another, then he can destroy the entire church. Amen. That's why we got five. I can slap you with an open hand, with these big hands, and it may hurt you. But if I take these five fingers that represents the five pastors and I ball that rascal up, now we're going to do some damage to the kingdom. And the thing is, I learned this in boxing. You don't rail back the punch. You, You don't get power from here. You get power from here. So when you stand, it comes from the shoulder. Boom! You see what I'm saying? The Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we do wrestle, meaning that, meaning that the battle is up close and personal, yeah. right? If it's up close and personal and we're grappling, you might not have time to rear back like that. But remember, when the fist is ball, the power comes from the shoulder. So if he's up on you, boom, that, man, that spiritual punch right there, give, 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 give you enough space for him to back off. Boom, boom. All your power in boxing comes from your shoulders. That's why we spend so much time building up the, the, the upper part of the body. Amen. Listen, God called five. Now, that don't mean it won't be six. That don't mean it won't be seven. Amen. But you, you better doggone believe that it's going to be at least five. Amen. Because when you ball up that fist bro, and make that punch, we punching together. We are one nation under God, Amen. indivisible. Amen. We are one nation under God, indivisible. We are one nation under God, indivisible. We are one nation under God, indivisible. We don't do this under our own power, for it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. And I'm getting ready to close. But I just, wanted to, I just wanted to encourage you today. Listen, stick together. Amen. Stay together. Amen. Don't let people try to break you. Don't let people try to separate you. Listen, a lot of times, man, even those that's closest to you, man, will try to get in there and, and, and try to do a little damage to, to hinder the relationship that we have one with another. Amen. We tight. And we're going to be tight. Yes. And I promise you this. And I make this promise before everybody in this room. I can tell you right now, I'm going to always love you. And I ain't going to let nothing come between us. Amen. No devil in hell. 
no devil on earth, no family member, no friend, no foe. I'm invested in you. I'm invested in you. And there ain't no stopping us now. There ain't no stopping us now. You've been hearing me speak relationship, relationship, relationship. I'm so engrossed in that right now. But I needed to start with us. Because if the people of God see that the pastors are tight, everybody else is getting on board. They either going to get in line or get out of line and find somewhere else to go. Because the love is going to be so strong, they won't be able to stay here. They won't be able to stay here. 1 Peter 5 and 9 says, and I'm closing, it says, Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. The good news is we're not alone when it comes to the various afflictions that we face in the body of Christ. Because our, our brethren have faced the same affliction Amen. and have came out victorious. However, the way you resist those afflictions is by remaining steadfast in the faith. When I think of steadfast, I think of words like solid, stable, standing on a sure foundation. Amen. Listen, the, the, the church needs to know that they have pastors that are solid that they have pastors and leaders that are stable. Amen. That, that they know what to expect when they have to sit down and talk to you. Listen, we don't want to be pastors that's capricious. We up one day and down the next. You don't know what mood you're going to be in. So when people come to talk to you, they feel like they got to tiptoe on eggshells because they don't know what they're about to get. No, we want to be those that are solid steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know, your labor is not in vain. Listen, this, this was great for Peter. Listen, we, we, we got to have that faith in God. And who knows that better than Peter? Huh? Who knows that better than Peter? Peter was one of them too, boy. He, he was prideful. He, man, I ain't, I, God, I ain't going to never deny you. It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. But when faced with a certain situation, y'all know what he did. And so Jesus was trying to warn him, Simon, Simon. But when he called you twice, we call you twice, pay attention. Simon, Simon, Satan have desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. I pray even now and declare and decree over this body that your faith fail not. And when you are converted, that you will strengthen the brethren in the name of Jesus. The enemy comes against our faith because he knows that that's the only thing that we have that will please God. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith is important to God because faith is the currency that moves God in heaven along with obedience. You got to have faith. I declare and decree even now that the pastors would keep the faith no matter what comes, no matter what you're up against. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil. Why? Because thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, thy comfort me. I declare even now and decree even now over this body that the body would hold on to their faith, that the body would keep the faith, that the body won't turn to the left or turn turn to the right, but that they would keep their eyes focused on Jesus in the name of Jesus, looking to Jesus. The author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before us endured the cross, despised the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. I declare even now and decree over these pastors and over this body that we will look to Jesus. The author and the finisher of our faith. Stay in your lane, baby. Don't worry about what sister so-and-so is doing over here. Don't worry about what brother so-and-so is doing over here. Stay in your lane, pastors. Stay focused on Christ 
and let's get some work done for the kingdom. Can y'all give God a praise?